Hi, welcome to my channel. If you don't already know me, I am Katie and I am a mum of three. Today's video is going to be answering some of the questions that I get all the time around the curly girl method. So if you are thinking about trying the process or you are part way through it and you're just a bit stuck and you have some questions, hopefully this will help. One of my most successful YouTube videos is all about how to start the curly girl method. So if you are thinking about starting that would be a great video to start off with and I will link it above and below so that you can go and watch that and hopefully it will make the process seem a little bit more simple than some of the other videos that you can find out there. Okay so let's get into the questions. How strict do you have to be when doing the curly girl method? It depends on what you want to get out of it. So for me personally, I don't like rules. I don't like feeling as though I have to do anything. So I'm not very strict at all. And my hair is healthy. It probably could be curlier. It could be a bit better, but it's fine for what I want it to be like. Sometimes I try harder. Sometimes I'm a bit more relaxed in my approach. You do not have to feel bad if you use a silicon shampoo every now and again, if you accidentally miss out a step. It, it doesn't matter. Your hair is not going to fall out if you suddenly do it wrong, okay? So don't worry about sticking exactly rigidly. This is about making informed choices around the products that you use, using techniques that will help your hair to find its natural pattern. It doesn't have to be a stressful activity at all. This is about helping your hair, not hindering your own life. Of course, there are rules around doing the process. So you cut out your silicones and your sulfates. Is it sulfates or sulfites? I, I never remember. You know, all of those horrible chemicals that are in shampoos and, and conditioners and, and all of the things. So you want to cut those out. And my other video, How to Start the Curly Girl Method, can help you with that. That is a rule that you, you want to try and stick to. You don't want to be buying the wrong products. But again, it doesn't matter if you go to stay at somebody's house and they only have one type of shampoo, it's okay. It's, it's not going to be the end of the world. One of the things that I rigidly stuck to in the beginning was not using a hairdryer. You know, heat is banned according to the really strict curly girl, girlies. I haven't got time in my life to be hanging around waiting for my hair to dry at the moment. I have quite long hair. If this was just dripping and wet, I, I wouldn't want to be leaving the house feeling like I wasn't done. So I do use a hairdryer, but I have a diffuser on my hairdryer. I will try and find this online again to link below, but it's one that just has a universal sort of flexible end so it fits onto the hairdryer that I own but it just means that the heat is distributed a bit more gently as I am drying my hair. I don't necessarily dry it to bone dry but I just make it so that it's a bit drier. Is the curly girl method expensive? It can be. There are products and products and products out there that you know, there's a gap in the market and people, businesses are gonna really want to get in there and charge you a lot of money because it's specifically for Curly Girl Method. You do not have to spend a fortune, okay? You can, if you have the budget and the, the want, the desire to do that, you go right ahead. I do not have the desire to spend lots of money and I do not have the money to spend. So I use Garnier Ultimate Blends. Uh, it's the almond one. It's cream with a green bottom. It's an almond one. So it's just, it's just Garnier. It's not an expensive designer brand in any shape or form. I also use their deep conditioning mask. That's Garnier as well. So I'm basically a Garnier person. I have tried other brands in the past, haven't particularly noticed a difference. And I follow a, a few people um, on Instagram or TikTok who also say the same. You know, sometimes you'll, you'll get slightly better quality of a curl, but you know, it's fine. Is it time consuming? In the beginning, it probably will feel like it because it's not just a simple wash your hair, dry your hair and be done. I mean, if you're somebody who has spent hours straightening your hair, 
for years and years you might not actually notice any difference if anything it's probably quicker um but if you normally just uh wash your hair give it a quick dry and then chuck it up in a ponytail yes it's going to be more time consuming but i have um i have three kids i have a dog i have a life i have a house to run i have not got time to be wasting on just you know drying my hair so i wouldn't be doing it if it was time consuming it takes the same amount of time of washing i would imagine at the end i do a lot of i wash my hair upside down um as you will see in the in the video that i uh, linked about starting um and i spend a lot of time scrunching my hair while it is wet hanging over the bath or sometimes if i'm standing in the shower you know i'm upside down and i spend a lot of time with the water just really scrunching that hair so that the water is being sort of like squinched into it that's an extra step that i wouldn't normally doing but i wouldn't say it adds hours to my life um the drying process yes you know when you're, you're sitting there with your your diffuser and you, you know like this it does feel tedious it does take a while but again you don't have to use a hairdryer you can just leave it to dry naturally so you know there is more of a process to it but it doesn't have to be time consuming how do you refresh your hair every single day this is something that took me a long time to get my head round because the the day one when you've just washed your hair this is day two by the way if you are wondering uh day one your hair always looks its best so if you are going somewhere you have plans for the day and you want your hair to look amazing wash your hair on the day get up extra early if you need to and get your hair so you have day one hair for the event day two hair is is second best um and it gets sl slowly worse as, as you go along but as with any hairstyle um the process of refreshing now there again that there are probably rules and you can probably find various i've tried looking for various videos as it goes and, and nobody's really told me how to do it i feel like there's a gap in the market there maybe i should do a video about that what i do is i get my denman brush this one normally it has denman but i've used it for so many years it doesn't have it anymore but denman brush and i flip my hair upside down and i run this under the tap obviously most of that water runs off so it's pointless in a way uh, but i run it under the tap and then i brush my hair which is another question we're going to get to is do you brush your hair the only time i ever brush my hair is when i'm washing it or i'm refreshing it you do if i brushed my hair right now the frizz would be like monica when she goes on holiday in in that episode of friends i would have so much hair so i only ever brush my hair when i have conditioner in it while i'm washing it and i'm brushing it at the end to help the clump forming process which again is in my video about starting and then on a refresh day so i my hair's upside down and i brush the damp brush through my hair which sort of ruins the day before's hair if you see what i mean because you like you've woken up with it a bit more like this and you're like mm, but it's okay it's okay so you're gonna dampen the brush or you can get your hand and, and dampen some of your hair and then you're gonna brush through it upside down the denman brush will help it to reform the clumps and you don't even need to add any new product you don't need to there's so much product from day one you don't need to add any more so you've brushed it with a damp brush damp hands and you're gonna just then one upside down still just give it a re scrunch you know re scrunch it all up together again and then leave that to air dry or, if, or again if you're in a rush you can dry it but just brushing it through with a damp with damp you know make your hair doesn't have to be soaking wet but just enough that you'll be able to see the clumps go back together again re-scrunch flip back over and you're good to go that is how i do it whether that's correct and official i don't know but that is how i got my curls to look better again this morning because i looked like a witch when i woke up this morning so this next point is around a question that i got recently and it is a topical because i'm just about to dye my hair and it is can i dye my hair if i do the curly girl method and again because hair dyes 
not full of the most wonderful ingredients. They're all a bit toxic and, and bleachy or, you know, whatever. I'm not going to lie, it's not great for your hair to dye it. So if you are stronger than me in, in the, you know, able to let yourself go completely grey, then hands up, you know, well done, do it. It's healthy for your hair to let it just be its natural self. I am not that person. I, I don't want to be. I'm so dark that then when I get these grey, I don't know if you can, can you just see the starting to come through here? I just, I, I feel like uh, you know, it's just too much of a contrast. I'm a bit like a, a skunk. All you have to bear in mind is the fact that your hair is really dehydrated after the process. So as long as you really condition your hair afterwards, really, you know, do a hair mask, leave-in conditioners, anything that will help that moisture to, to be absorbed back into your hair, you will be okay. It might take a couple of weeks of that deep conditioning process to, to reset your hair, but it's rescuable. Dye your hair as infrequently as possible, but do what you need to do. Again, it's your hair. If you want to dye your hair, dye it. The fact that you are cutting out the sulfates or sulfites, whatever it is, and the, the silicones, every other time is still beneficial to your hair. So if you have to do a dyeing hair process, you're offsetting the damage by, by using great products the rest of the time. How to stop the frizz. If you have a curly or a wavy element to your hair, you will suffer with frizz. It is a pain. It's possibly something you've lived with your entire life. I've been there, I get it. There are days where my hair just really is just frizz, frizz, frizz. Your hair is dehydrated. So you have to make sure that you are using conditioners and really when, when your hair is wet, you're really squeezing that water into your hair. So don't just run the water over your hair, really like pull it. I've seen some people get a bowl and dip their hair in the water so that it really gets the chance to soak it up. Think of your hair as roots of a plant. It really needs time to absorb that water. Okay, so the, the actual reason your hair is frizzy is because it is damaged and it's dry and it's just, you know, it's like peely skin after your sunburn. It's like, it really needs moisture. But I live in a hard water area and what that means is the minerals in the hard water coat your hair. So as much as you've given up those silicones, the minerals in the water are coating your hair, which means your hair is unable to absorb the conditioner and the water. So your hair is still dehydrated, even though you're thinking you're doing great using all these great products, your hair is still dehydrated didn't realise this until recently. Googled it to see why is my hair so frizzy when I do the curly girl method and somebody recommended this. I don't know if you can see that very well but it is called Come Clean and it's by Kinky Curly. Basically it strips those minerals off of your hair, allowing your hair to absorb the moisture again. I've done two washes with this so it, it is expensive for, for the size that it is. I think I paid like 15 pounds, 14 pounds for this, but you only use it once a month, once every other month. And you, I mean, you can see I've done two washes. I've used the teeny tiniest amount, a pea size amount. It really lathers up well. So this will probably last me well over a year, like a year, a year over a year, a long time. Tiniest amount. It lathers up really well. You know, it's not about cleaning the scalp or anything like that. It's just sort of like a, a once over. It, it dissolves all of those minerals. Then you rinse it and then you condition as normal and you do the process as normal. But your hair hasn't got those minerals blocking the moisture from getting in. So stop the frizz. First of all, if you live in a soft water area, you just need more conditioner. If you live in a hard water area, have a look at that and I'll link it down below because you probably have mineral buildup all over your hair. A big concern for people is that their hair becomes really greasy or if they already have greasy hair, they're like, I can't stop using shampoo. My hair is greasy enough as it is without using conditioner as the cleaning agent. I promise you that shampoo actually makes your hair 
greasier because it strips your oils then your head produces more oils to compensate from being stripped so if you cut the shampoo out and i always had greasy hair like always always and now my hair literally never gets greasy the only reason i wash my hair is because one i know it's dirty because it's been however many days but two because the curls have all disappeared and i want to refresh my curls and have nice curls my hair never gets greasy anymore ever and honestly i was the queen of grease I, it was just gross always greasy hair it was such an embarrassing thing and now it just never never gets greasy so some people do find that they do get heavy greasy hair it's not quite greasy it's just really heavy heavy hair after doing the process for a while and what that means is that your hair has got a build up of product on it so you might want to do a strip wash a great way to strip your hair and actually i do have a video on this is an apple cider vinegar rinse so that is a great way a natural way of stripping off all of the build up that you get and i'll link that up and below it also could be that you are using a conditioner that is sort of protein heavy and you might need one that's a little bit less so it's about experimenting with the different types of conditioners that are out there it's I, I can't say what because it's your hair and you need to experiment if you have any other questions please do pop them down below I'm happy to do these videos and so I hope that this has helped you to go do you know what I'm going to give it another go or oh, yeah that really helped that question I was really stuck on that I felt like I had to be really strict and now I, I know I don't have to or my hair is greasy I'm going to try that or I live in a hard water area I'm going to get that shampoo whatever it is I hope that it has helped if you have any other questions put them down below. Otherwise, I will see you again soon. Bye.